All right, everyone, welcome to the Blessed Family Podcast. So good to be back with you. Forgive me for the long absence. Uh, we've been in Pennsylvania, we've been in Kentucky, we've been in Virginia, uh, lots of places in between. And to all of you who we got to see out there, man, we had a blast. We were at the Shindig there in uh, Pennsylvania, beautiful, beautiful state. Uh, got to speak to some people in Western Kentucky. That was a lot of joy. Uh, it was me, Amy, the kids. We were in our bus having a blast. Uh, also got to see some great sights, friends. America has some wonderful things to see. Went to the Ark Encounter. That That is, in my opinion, one of the best road trips in America. If you have not been to the Ark Encounter, you need to make it happen. Uh, it's, it's just an amazing place. And 45 minutes north of that is the Creation Museum. Uh, just awesome road schooling for your family. We also went to Gettysburg. The highlight of that for my family was seeing uh, the place where General Low, uh, Low Armistead fell. Um, we wanted to go up and see where uh, Chamberlain fought, but they had that closed off. But we got to see there's this little, it looks kind of like a tombstone, but it's like this um, monument, and it says this is where General Armistead fell. And it's just incredible, incredible story. Uh, we went to Mount Vernon, which which is really cool. We went to the death site of St of Stonewall Jackson, which wasn't planned, but we're going down the road, and all, and all of a sudden we see one of those brown signs that you know announces a state park, and it's a death site of Stone of uh, Stonewall Jackson, and we pulled off. Uh, that was that was awesome. We went to Appomattox, friends. If you want to get your children fired up for truth, for theology, for liberty. Uh, teach them good, true American history. It is so, so rich. Our story, the good, the bad, and the ugly, is so amazing and rich and insightful. And so uh, we ha we had a blast. Thank you for your prayers. But uh, it it is definitely good to be back with you. And we're doing today's show in our home. Uh, we've set up a studio here where we're going to be uh, trying to get our uh, YouTube channel back up and running. And so uh, you can listen, of course, on podcasts. You can also check us out on our YouTube channel. All right, friends. Well, the title of today's show is called Marriage is Parenting, which maybe you've never even heard those three words spoken like that or that phrase, marriage is parenting. What does that mean? Well, simply put, the way you do marriage sets you up for either success or failure in raising your children to a very large degree, okay? I mean... This doesn't make it or break it, but goodness gracious, in, in some ways it does. It's a really big deal, folks. I mean, we try to only speak of important things, so I'm sure I could say this each show, but I really want to challenge you as we jump into this topic. This is a really, really big deal, all right? Marriage is parenting. Marriage, the way you do marriage, without you knowing it very often, but it's true, trains up your children. It's a really big deal. And see, this is one of the traps that many people fall into because they love their children so, so much because, uh, you know, because I mean, how can you not? They're these beautiful babies and they grow up and they're cute, even though they can be very sinful, they're still cute, adorable. I mean, you love your kids. And yet the trap is to put parenting before marriage, right? It's to work on your children more than your marriage. It's to make it's to make your relationship with your children the greater priority over your marriage. And friends, that is a trap, easy trap to fall into. Amy and I, definitely guilty as charged. But here's some good news. If you've fallen into this trap, guess what? God is gracious, and you can always turn things around. And so uh, this, is, this, is, this is something that, that, that needs to be a topic that you and your spouse sit down, you humbly, you know, you pray, you listen to podcasts like this episode today, and you ask God, and you look at the scriptures we're going to mention and other scriptures that go along with this, and you ask God to do a work in your heart, okay? All right, so check it out, dads. Let's start with you. How you treat your wife is training your children once again, without you knowing it or not, your children are watching. They are seeing what, well, they're seeing how you treat your wife. And so they're seeing what it means to serve, what it means, hopefully, to be kind, to be compassionate, to sacrifice, to put others first. Maybe, maybe they aren't seeing that, but see, that's what they're supposed to be seeing. Character 
needs to be taught, but more than being taught, it is caught. It's something that, you know, j- just as bad company corrupts good morals, good company, the good example sets people up for success. And so, dads, the way that you treat your wife, the way you treat the mother of your children is supposed to show them, to inspire them, to be an example for them of service, kindness, compassion, sacrifice, putting others first. You know, dads, dads will often come to me frustrated because their children are so selfish. They'll say, Jared, my kids are so self-centered. They aren't engaged. They're not kind. And what these dads often fail to recognize is that unbeknownst to them, they shape that attitude in their children by the way they treated their wives. Man, when I found this out, talk about conviction. Talk about just Lord have mercy. But friends, ignorance is not bliss. We need to know this. I mean, after all, think about it. What does the Bible say? It says, husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. You, dad, are to be the example or the prototype of Christ. I mean, once again, how? what is God's chief means on this earth physically in the physical realm, everyday life? For children to see the love of God. Well, guess what? It's you, Dad. God's chief means, in my personal opinion, of our children seeing, oh, that's what God is like. That's, and that's what I'm supposed to be like. That's the love. That's the compassion. That's the goodness. It's supposed to be chiefly through dads. So guess what? Brothers, when you're hard on your wife or when you, when you uh, neglect fellowship to her or you show selfishness in your relationship, your children see that. They are very observant. They are taking it in even at the youngest ages. I mean, a three-year-old, they're looking, they see it. And, it, and it's, see, you say, oh, well, that frustrates me. How come my kid is so observant? It's by God's design because God's intention is that that three-year-old will be seeing a dad who obviously isn't perfect, but a dad who loves, adores, provides for, protects, is kind, compassionate, all of those things. Dad, you want your children to be loving, kind, compassionate, selfless? Be that kind of husband, all right? Be that kind of husband. It's a big deal. All right, now, so, so that is how dads train children to be kind, compassionate. Now, you know, someone's saying, well, are moms able to be mean you know, and, and not kind to their husbands? Of course not. It goes both ways. Both parents are to teach the children what it means to be kind. And yet there's something about the reality that God tells. I mean, yes, God in Titus chapter two commands wives to love their husbands and also to love their children. So wives are to be exemplifying that love. And yet there is a very serious reality of dads showing that love. And that's why the Bible says that they are, well, because they, they are a picture of Christ. The wife can exemplify Christ, but the Bible says that the husband is the example of Christ. But let's transition. Let's talk about wives, about mothers. Moms, guess what? How you treat your husband, whether you know it or not, newsflash, how you treat your husband is training your children on, on, on what kind of honor, what level of respect they're going to be. I mean, think about it. What do kids struggle with today more than just about anything else? If you, you know, if you're talking to people say, you know, what's some of your frustrations with your children? I mean, not only will they say, well, they can be unloving, unkind, but mainly they say they are disrespectful. They don't show respect. I mean, they are just blatantly disrespectful. This is such an epidemic to the point where it's even expected. I mean, things have gotten so bad where parents have just relinquished hope and said, well, this is what it means to be a teenager. This is what it means to, quote, unquote, be an adolescent, which is all Darwinian hellish philosophies. They aren't in the Bible. They aren't in history. We just expect children to be disrespectful because it's the norm now. Why? Why is this the case? More today than ever before in Western civilization I want to encourage you or I want to suggest to you that it's the example given very often by the wife in the way she treats her husband. So moms, you want your children to be respectful people. 
You want them to show honor. You want them to be, I mean, nothing, nothing wins the favor of others. Nothing impresses others more. I mean, nothing opens up doors more than honor and respect and submitting to authority and being willing to yield. I mean, that is a huge character attribute in the kingdom of God. And it works up, you know, obviously, you know, we say, let your kingdom come, let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. If it works in the kingdom of God, it works very much here on this world. People, even, even people who hate God, honor others who show respect. It's a big deal. So if you want your children uh, to be respectful, if you want them to be honoring, so much of it falls on you. Now, of course, this works both ways, right? Just, uh, just like I said with the wives, it's not like dads can say, okay, well, honey, it's all on you as far as the kid's respect level goes, and it doesn't matter how I respect you. No, dads, that's not true because First Peter chapter 3, ballpark of verse 7 says that you are to honor your wives. So it goes both ways. I'm not saying that anyone is exempt from love and respect, but even though we're both called to that, there is an emphasis put on the husband with love and kindness and compassion and the wife with honor and respect. Okay. So when it comes to disrespect, this is very often in my personal opinion, coming from the example given by the wife. After all, once again, what does the Bible say? It says, wives respect your husbands. It's a picture of how the Christian is to honor Christ. Moms, how do you want your children to treat you and their father? How do you want them to treat visitors? How do you want them to treat their pastor? How do you want them to treat their future spouse? How do you want them to treat their boss? Well, you set the standard. And, and, and once again, just like I said, dads will come to me complaining that their children aren't kind. Well, moms often come to me saying, man, Jared, what should I do? My kid is just so disrespectful. Can you please counsel them? Can you talk to them? And not always, not always. I mean, this is, this is, these are general principles, okay? And so you have to see if they fit and to what extent. But very often, I recognize in that family that, yes, the children are disrespectful, but so is the wife. She is conformed to the modern mediocre expectations of the world, which is completely void of honor and respect for husbands. That's seen as archaic. That's seen as, uh, what's the word, like a patriarchal uh, culture, something like that. Friends, it is the Word of God. It's great. And the most fulfilled marriages are marriages that embrace these roles, not looking at the other person saying, you do this, but looking at their own lives and saying, okay, this is what I want to do. Or I'm sorry, this is what God wants me to do. This is what I need to do. And hopefully God, is, God has convinced me so much of how amazing he is that this is what I want to do because I believe that God's ways work. Okay, so the best counsel I can give you is, is for both, you know, husbands and wives, wives, both of you need to grow in your love and respect for each other. Okay, and, 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 and also just a little side note that I'll just attach real quick. Don't hide your conflicts from your children, by and large. Let your children see how you work out issues. I mean, sometimes it's appropriate to go back in the bedroom and close the door and talk about it. But sometimes, you know, there are some parents I know with good intentions, really good intentions. But keep in mind, good intentions are not a substitute for lack of understanding. I know parents who with great intentions have always, they always escape if they, if, if, if they have a conflict and that backfires because <laughs> it paints a, faulty paradigm for your children. Like, oh gosh, well, moms and dads never go through hard times uh, or husbands and wives never have issues. And then they get married and they're like, gosh, what did my parents know? Well, it's not what mom and dad knew. It's what they did. They kept everything a secret. So let your children very often see you work things out because guess what? It's an opportunity for them to see you exercise great kindness, gentleness, honor, and respect. And it, and it passes down to them. Friends, this topic that we're touching today is huge. 
Uh, this one thing could be the difference in the direction your children go in life. Not to be too dramatic, but honestly, this is a very, very big deal. Take it to heart. God's word is powerful. And, and, and in, in closing, let me just challenge you with this. God's commands to husbands and wives are so amazing. They aren't only for husbands and wives. <laughs> Think about how awesome that is. God's commands for husbands and wives aren't just for the blessing of husbands and wives, but also for the benefit of children and for progeny to generations, for generations to come. That's how awesome God is. He says, husbands, wives, do this. And he doesn't even really tell you, although you can see the principles. I mean, I'm not making this up. You can see it. It's very obvious in scripture, but it filters down to blessing your children and blessing your church. I mean, blessing all of society. Friends, good marriages make for strong societies. You find a society filled with dysfunctional marriages, you're going to have a dysfunctional society. So it's a big deal. All of you, I know, love your kids. Uh, there might be some bitterness with your spouse. You got to, you have to forgive. You have to confess that Satan loves bitterness. It, you know, it chokes up the marriage. It's, you know, this root of bitterness that defiles many. Get rid of that. It's dangerous. It's like wanting to put cyanide in their drink, but you put it in your own. It's building a gallows in your heart for them, but you're the one that swings on it just like Haman. It's not a good idea. Forgive them, let it go, and uh, embrace your role and experience the blessing of God. Friends, God's ways work. All right, friends. Well, it's great to be back with you uh, on The Blessed Family, and uh, looking forward to next time. If you ever need any encouragement, any prayer, reach out to us at our website, jareddodd.com. You can go down there, and it says getting uh, uh, get in, uh, get in contact with us. You can click on that and it comes to our email. We, we would love to connect with you until next time. Blessings to you. And I just pray that God would give you and your spouse a vision for forgiveness, renewal, and focusing on each, you know, each person focusing on their own role. God bless, bless these couples in Jesus name. Amen. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.